Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. In this video, we are going to analyze the 4K Blu-ray of the Matrix in terms of the HDR presentation. Now, this disc is available in Dolby Vision, but because the Canon DPV3120 4K HDR reference monitor that I'm going to be using to analyze this disc will not actually extract Dolby Vision from this movie, which is why I have to actually analyze the HDR10 base layer, but rest assured that the Dolby Vision presentation is just dynamic metadata on top, so analyzing the HDR10 layer is sufficient for our needs. Before starting the analysis through the Canon DPV3120, what we are going to do is to read some of the static metadata in terms of HDR10 presentation using a Panasonic UB9000 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray player. So as you can see here, it is mastered on probably either a Sony X300 or Sony X310 because the maximum mastering display luminance is 1000 nits. And also, if you look at the minimum mastering display luminance, it is around 0.002 nits. And if we look at the max CRL, it is running at around 992 nits and the uh, max FALL or maximum frame average luminous level is running at 518 nits, which is one of the higher ones we have seen across the variety of 4K Blu-ray titles we have analyzed so far. So let's go into the HDR analysis toolkit of the Canon DPV3120 then. And right from the start of this movie, you can see many elements on screen that reached almost 1000 nits or even exceeded 1000 nits, such as the flashlights from these officers here. And by flashlights, I mean the torch, not the sex toy. And then if we go into this sequence here where Neo is first introduced to the construct, you can see that the white background hovered almost around 800 nits consistently. And I think, you know, from memory, only a few displays have the capability to do this scene justice. I'm talking about full array local dimming LED LCDs, which have really high needs full screen. Again, from memory, the Panasonic DX902 and the Sony ZG9 or Z9G can reach almost 900 nits in terms of their full field brightness. And the recent Sony ZH8 or Z8H can reach almost 800 nits. So these are the LED LCDs that can do this scene justice in terms of reproducing the full screen luminance of almost 800 nits, you know, within the construct. And then if we go into the next scene in the Nebuchadnezzar, you can see these lamps, these fluorescent lights here behind tank exceeding 1000 nits, reaching maybe 1200 nits, and even during brief flashes of scene cuts, you know, reaching 1400 nits, giving that sort of dynamic range to the whole image. And even in fairly mundane scenes, such as this one, when Neo met the Oracle, you can see the handlebar on the oven reached 400 nits, almost 400 nits, giving that sort of dimensionality that you know, more subdued HDR presentation just cannot deliver. You know, when I talk about subdued HDR presentation, they are basically grading the sun at 200 nits. And when you have only a dynamic range from 0 to 200 nits to encapsulate everything from black to the sun, then you don't have much dimensionality or depth to actually play with in terms of the lighting. Of course, Cinematographers and DPs and directors have other means to introduce depth to the picture, for example, by using their lens aperture, by using bokeh, by using focus, by using placement, by using the wide angle or, you know, close up of the shot itself. But light is just another element that I think can add a lot of dimension, a lot of texture to the entire image, and certainly the matrix does it in space here. So from the HDR point of view, I'm extremely satisfied with the matrix, but I think the highlight roll off is a bit on the harsh side, and I don't think it is as sweet as the highlight roll off that I've seen 
on let's say the greatest showman but rest assured that the peak brightness is there and the shadow detail is there and i think that if you watch in dolby vision on a fully capable dolby vision television you will be able to utilize the dynamic metadata to provide an even better frame by frame or scene by scene optimization next let's go on to check the white color gamut capability of this movie and the first scene that popped to my mind when i wanted to find an example of white color gamut would be this scene containing the woman in the red dress and indeed when i place the pixel value cursor on her red dress you can see that it exceeded rec 709 but there are other instances of white color government use and actually quite extreme white color government use in the movie as well so for example i saw many instances on monitors in the matrix for example here you can see that it exceeded rec 709 not only exceeded rec 709 but it veered very close to rec 2020 in fact and again in another shot here you can see that if i place the cursor here it ventured extremely close and probably right at the edge of rec 2020 and if we go to this frame here again i have to pause at a still frame so that you know i can do a proper analysis if we place the cursor on this red beacon above the metal detector again you can see that the red here is right at the edge of rec 2020 so this disc actually has many elements that are pushed right to the borders of Rec 2020 and when I actually watched it on the Canon DPV 3120 it doesn't even do this justice because you know in terms of the Rec 2020 coverage it is only in the high 70s it's not even you know above 80 percent it doesn't actually have a quantum dot enhancement film so in a sense this movie if by pushing the colors to Rack 2020 it is actually ahead of its time because i don't think there are any consumer displays or even let's say professional displays that can actually do this film justice in terms of reproducing the full Rack 2020 color gamut which is found in quite a few instances in this movie so i would say that this disc is ahead of its time just like the movie itself it is really ahead of its time so the wcg use in this film is certainly ahead of his time and i think you know this is a film that will actually get better as displays improve and you can actually see the colors closer to what is being presented in the disc itself so if you want a good hdr showcase i think the matrix is a good this to own and i think the dolby atmos soundtrack is fairly good as well and it certainly would contain a lot of scenes that has very high rewatchability and i think it is certainly one of the discs that i will file under true hdr and if you're interested in other titles with good true real hdr you can click here for my current playlist and if you want to find out some films with subdued hdr presentation or restrained hdr presentation or even just sdr in an hdr container then i have compiled a playlist here that you can watch and maybe you would like to avoid these films 